So as I begin this video, I'd like to make an acknowledgement that I'm borrowing from a channel called The Day Tripper. And no disrespect is intended toward this channel or any other channel that I will use on this video. I simply use their channels for teaching purposes. I'd also like to acknowledge that at one time I was almost totally under the hoax lie system and that um, if somebody was making a video like I'm making I would immediately dismiss them. So please those of you out there who watch my videos try to realize I came out of the hoax lie system. So we're going to begin here down in Texas and also if you're a Texan this could be offensive to you so you may you may not want to watch it. <laughs> Texas indisputably became Texas independent and sovereign now marked by the tallest monument in America and what better place to start our exploration than up at the top. Whew, look at that view. We're hundreds of feet above the San Jacinto battlefield which gives you the best perspective of the final battle of the Texas Revolution. It had been a hard few months for the Texans. Since the first shots were fired in Gonzales, the Texans had declared independence at Washington on the Brazos and suffered terrible losses at both the Alamo and Goliad. The powerful Mexican army now marched across Texas, sending settlers running in fear and burning their possessions in what's now known as the Runaway Scrape. However, instead of running to safety in Louisiana, Houston turned his army south to face Santa Ana head-on at San Jacinto. Today, visitors see a battleship, a monument, and a state park. But of course, in April of 1836, none of it was there. The text... Did you notice the reflecting pool? Reflecting pool. The monument, just like the so-called Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., with a reflecting pool. And once again, I'd like to say thanks to Dave J., Dave Johnson. One time I had conversations with Dave over one of his uh, barms that he established. And I was so thankful I got a chance to talk to him. And I remember he told me that when you take something like this and you use a reflecting pool, the percentage of the shadow is about 33%. In other words, they're using the 33 in the reflecting pool. a monument in a state park. But of course, in April of 1836, none of it was there. The Texian army, numbering 900 men, camped west near Buffalo Bayou. Across the field, less than a mile away, camped the Mexican army, believing they had the Texans cornered. On April 20th, a small... Okay, now he didn't give you the estimate. The so-called estimate in the hoax story is maybe 1,300. So the Texans are supposedly outnumbered in hoax lie history. In other words, this is all fantasy, okay? Now you have to get that out of your head. That is history. It's fantasy. Left two Texans wounded. And that same evening, 500 additional soldiers under General Coase joined the Mexican camp. Santa Ana, confident the Texans would never strike his superior numbers, put no soldiers on watch. It would be his fatal mistake. At 3.30 in the afternoon on April 21st. Did you notice? 3.30 in the afternoon. Did you notice? The hoax liars included the 33. So, let's take you back to the so-called battle in the 1800s. And a battle is about to begin and someone looks at their watch and says, Oh, it's 3.30. Let's record this before we get our rifles and go and shoot somebody. 
Let's make sure everybody knows it was 3.30 in the afternoon. Hmm. Interesting how the numbers always pop up. Once again, thanks to Dave J for telling us the numbers are mighty vital and significant in telling you hoax lie stories. Cured by trees and a small hill, the Texian army assembled. With rifles ready, they charged. The unexpected onslaught sent the Mexican army into a panic. The next few minutes were a storm of rifle fire and hand-to-hand -hand combat as Texans overwhelmed the Mexican side, shouting, remember the Alamo and remember Goliath. In a and sovereign, now marked by the tallest monument in America. And what better... Okay, so he's trying to tell you that... <clears throat> They couldn't wait to y'all remember the Alamo. You see, jump over and start killing Mexicans, right? Remember Pearl Harbor, right? Remember this, remember that. No, wipe it clean because you've been hoaxed. Okay, so let's talk a little bit um, about the death casualties. under General Coase joined the Mexican camp. Santa Ana, confident the Texans would never strike his superior numbers, put no soldiers on watch. It would be his fatal mistake. At 3.30 in the afternoon on April 21st, obscured by trees and a small hill, the Texian army assembled. With rifles ready, they charged. The unexpected onslaught sent the Mexican army into a panic. The next few minutes were a storm of rifle fire and hand-to-hand -hand combat as Texans overwhelmed the Mexican side, shouting, remember the Alamo and remember Goliath. In a mere 18 minutes, the battle was over. 630 Mexicans... Okay, once again, let's transport ourselves back to this time. And I want you to know that I have assigned a timekeeper with a stopwatch. And as soon as the battle's over, the stopwatch is shut off, and he announces, Oh, that battle is only 18 minutes! Or could it be a code to tell you it's all nonsense? Once again, if you take the 8 and the 1, that makes 9. And there's going to be a lot of nines. Now he's going to announce the death toll for uh, the Mexicans. 630 Mexicans lay dead. And only okay, take six and three makes nine. Now he's going to tell you only nine uh, Texans were dead. Only nine Texans. One of the most decisive victories in military history. One battle ended a revolution that had been boiling for years. A people struggling for their independence finally had it. The grounds are covered with markers and stones. Okay, now once again it resembles the quote Washington Monument. And we'll take a little video here to talk a little bit about the making of it. In San Jacinto. Texas. Jacinto Monument is one of the most recognizable symbols of Texas independence. It's certainly the first thing anyone sees when they visit the San Jacinto Battleground. That's because the monument is massive. It's 567 feet tall, which makes it 12 feet tall, which makes it 12 feet taller than the Washington Monument. It's topped with a 35 foot tall star. The star has nine points, so that a five pointed star can be seen from all directions. Okay, now try to realize that it's not a star, it's a pentagram. It's a pentagram used in witchcraft. The actual monument is a phallic symbol, an obelisk. And the obelisk most likely is something of a symbol of the power of Nimrod. 
and the shaft of Nimrod, phallic symbols, and they dominate the land. And we acknowledge that there are three major phallic symbols that reflect the uh, coming of the New World Order, and that is the Washington Monuments and the um, Vatican and in the city of London, the small city of London, not the major metropolis. So each one of those phallic symbols reflects something of the New World Order. Now this obviously is a little bit bigger than the Washington Monument, and uh, as she mentioned, it's the tallest monument, freestanding monument, I think, in the United States. <clears throat> so, you need to know something, and what I'm about to tell you may shock you, but I do like to shock people. So, put on your shock cap. Now on your left is Santa Anna, Saint Anne, <laughs> uh, actually it's Lopez something or other, <clears throat> supposedly the Mexican general in charge. And on your right is Colonel Henry Morgan. Now, Morgan plays Santa Anna. What do I mean? Well, the major clue that brought me to this conclusion is that the Battle of San Jacinto was fought on his plantation, Morgan's plantation. Now that's a clue. Researching the so hoax called Civil War of the United States the opening battle and the closing battle is fought on land owned by a major mason. In other words, they're stages. So there could have been people dressed up like Mexican soldiers and Texans and firing some muskets in the air and so forth just to rouse the population. But it was his plantation. Now, I have to show you evidence, and I have to talk a lot more yet, because people are going to refute this uh, almost immediately. That he played Santa Ana. That's a dull role. That's a split persona that I've talked about in some of my other videos. So I have to take you to a book and to show you that this gentleman here was simply just a real estate uh, conglomerate who was buying up property everywhere and that's all he was and he was a mason so I have to take it to a book now there he is And this paragraph right here will tell you that the Battle of San Jacinto was fought on his plantation. Now, none of the history people are going to use the word plantation, and none of them are going to connect it with Mr. James Morgan. I think I said Henry, so... Now down here it'll tell you once again, Morgan became a key figure in the Texas Revolution. He held the rank of colonel. Probably was just a mason with a costume. 
The culminating battle of the Texas Revolution, San Jacinto, was fought on his plantation. San Jacinto was not even formed until about 1870. All it was was a plantation. Everybody will call it the Battle of San Jacinto like it's a town, but it's not. It's his plantation. Now, another crazy thing that they tell you is that supposedly he had a slave girl that <clears throat> um, he loaned out to Santa Anna. Somehow, this slave girl of Morgan uh, got over to the Mexican rank and got to be with Santa Anna. And they were having an evening together. And while Santa Anna is busy with the slave girl, <laughs> Sam Houston attacks. And supposedly he comes out of the tent uh, <laughs> with the little clothing on or whatever and is surprised by the attack of Sam Houston. Now later this is linked to the song the Yellow Rose of Texas, and the author of this book will say, oh, that's been re refuted, that's apocryphal. Okay? Linking it to the song. But they don't refute this story of the slave girl going to be visit Santa Anna. Whose slave girl is it? Morgan. Where are they? They are on Morgan's plantation. <laughs> Do you get it? Now I'll show you another piece of evidence that I uncovered. You have to be patient with me. My videos are not of the highest quality. But I hope the information I give you is of the highest quality. And I didn't put labels, but once again, this is Morgan. And this is Santa Anna. It's hard to get photographs or paintings of them both. <clears throat> Another piece of evidence is, uh, let's see, where is that at? Oh, here it is, right here. This is a description that Colonel Morgan, James Morgan, was given land in 1835 from guess where Harrisburg Pennsylvania now there's a Harrisburg Texas and it's just close to the battle of San Jacinto now why is it called Harrisburg uh, Texas because the dude that owned the land also was involved in the naming of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which incidentally is the capital of Pennsylvania. Okay? So, that land is acquired and it's about half of what he was entitled to. Which means Mr. Morgan gets a large chunk of land right there near Harrisburg, Texas. And that large chunk of land is his plantation. And in the hoax lie system, the uh, Masons will use their own property for their plays. So, <laughs> what I'm saying is that... <clears throat> It was all a bunch of hooey. That is the Battle of San Jacinto. And there never was a villain by the name of Santa Anna, St. Anne Lopez. And that Colonel Morgan acquired a large sum of land, which I believe was about 
1,600 acres or something. I'm not sure. I saw it somewhere else. But this document will show you that he was a landowner, big time. Now, if you watch some of these other uh, people trying to explain things to you, such as maybe this one or any other one, <clears throat> they will tell you that the land was owned by a McCormick, an Irish immigrant. <laughs> now, they'll never mention the name of Morgan. Never. Now, I'm not going to doubt that there were McCormicks on the land because they would have been part of a plantation and an effort to bring in immigrants to support the plantation, a large number of Irish immigrants. But the landowner was none other than Morgan. Based on that document that I showed you. Okay? That he was the owner. of the land where the battle was fought. Now do you really believe that they couldn't wait to kill more Mexicans? Because as the story continues, uh, they will say that <clears throat> as, the Tex as the Mexicans are fleeing the Texans can't wait to shoot them down in cold blood. And hence, a day later, uh, they will find Santa Ana, who disguised himself as just a regular soldier. And they capture him, and they hold him prisoner, and so forth. And that's so they can drive the rest of the Mexicans out of the territory. So the very next day they capture him. <laughs> and then they have that historic spot where um, supposedly Sam Houston defeated him and he surrendered. And the Mexicans are beginning to flee Texas. And Texas belongs to Texas. Anytime you see these huge monuments like this, they are symbols of the hoax lie system. And they are telling you you're being lied to. They are telling you that the nonsense is to be ingratiated into the minds of Americans as part of history. Now you can experience cognitive dissonance and you can reject what I'm telling you as much as you want or you can visit these sites, these pillars and bow to the lies you've been told and come under the power of and the influence of the pentagram, the large pentagram, and believe all the nonsense you've been told. Or you can let go of it and say, that was me at one time. By the way, that's not me. <laughs> walking the, wa the halls of museums, talking to museum curators, and letting the, the, the so-called artifacts speak to you and tell you nonsense. And there's a ring, by the way, of Sam Houston and his mother engraved in it, Honor. By the way, that's a whole nother category, talk about Sam Houston, but anyhow, 
the battle of San Jacinto was nonsense. It was just a hoax play put on by the Masons. Why? Probably to just cover up the fact that Mexico just basically sold the land to some people and they grabbed it and one of them would have been Morgan because he was basically a real estate agent and he didn't want anybody to know the truth of the matter. And that's why Texas was so-called independent for about 10 years before it became a state because it was a land grab. Well, there's Sammy Houston over there. But the most important one is not Houston, it's Morgan. Because Morgan was the one who orchestrated the whole thing. And there's your symbol. And there's your Battle of San Jacinto between the two pillars. What more evidence do you need? You've been lied to. Sorry if you're from Texas, and I just spoiled some of your Texas history. <laughs> Maybe I should change my name of my channel and call it the History Spoiler. Hey, thank you for watching. End of video.